video, we're going to go over the supply de demand lines and why that I thought we'd have a big explosion yesterday before it broke out. We're going to go over that. So when it comes up next time, you'll be ready to go. All right, so let's check out how could we predict this big move up yesterday. How was that a prediction on that big explosion to the upside? So yesterday morning, um, in the morning, we talked about right here at this level. We were sitting at... Where was it? 8.30. So right here at this level, the market was actually trying to break through 08. Right there. So right there at that level, let me get through this. Right there at that level. So what, what we talked about is we looked for a big explosion in the market. Why? Well, there's a couple trades that I set up yesterday that we talked about is that we look for a V bottom down here. If the market would have sold off, we would have looked for a V bottom on these supply demand lines. Now, these supply demand lines all right, are generated from previous support in resistance, meaning that's where the market had originally stopped in the past. So if you have 30 days back, like this chart, then it shows you where there's major accumulation that happened the last 30 days. If you put five days, it shows you where major accumulation distribution happened the last five days. You put one day back, it shows you yesterday where major accumulation distribution has, has stopped the market. What it does, it shoots these lines forward, all right? So these supply demand lines are these blue lines, these light blue lines. And what I was telling the traders yesterday is in the room that I was looking for a major blow-off rally. Why? Why was I looking for a major blow-off rally? Because when I see no supply and demand line above me at all, which we did not have none yesterday, I don't have any res resistance to 3,900 in the market. So these are huge opportunities that we need to take advantage of because if we take advantage of these opportunities, look at amount of ticks that are available. I said we had 75 points of upside, 75 points of no resistance. And that's pretty crazy to think about, but it happens quite often when you understand how these supply demand lines work. You'll see big gaps in the market. So when we finally got through, I said the breaking point in the market was this right here. 14 and a half breakout. We broke out. We had a distribution bar a red distribution bar, and there's my full retracement, and it absolutely nailed the trade. And this is exactly what I was talking about yesterday we're looking for. I had a speed bar that came in. Remember, speed, we want to trade speed retracements. Speed retracements. It's the best way to trade the system. What does speed retracements mean? Let's just take a look at the whole day's activity, and you're going to start understanding how this works. You're going to see thousands and thousands of charts that looked exactly the same way. The one thing that we have, okay, so we talked about it right there where the red is. I talked about a breakout of 14 and a half. Look for the full retracement. It's got below 10% right here. And then we don't have nothing above us until 3,900. The market just exploded. Just a beautiful day in the market. All right, so what we want to do is there's a couple ways to define trend. Let's make sure we understand this chart. This chart, if you can understand how to read this trend chart, you do very well with the system because it puts you in the, in, the, in the right spots in the market. It doesn't matter if you trade individual stocks. It works with individual stocks. It doesn't matter if you're trading futures, any futures, any currency, and it works on Forex also. 
because what we're trying to do is we're trying to establish the trend first. Trend with speed. If we're going to trade the markets, we've got to have some speed in the market. That's why these speed bars are so important, and that's why we're adding it to the automated algorithm that you members are testing right now. So that's very important, trend with speed. So trend is categorized by, obviously, green would be up, red would be down, right? So there was no, and the whole entire session yesterday, there wasn't one red trend box, not one. It was green all the way up. You do not have one red trend box. So that tells you trend is intact to the upside. Now I was going over this yesterday, all these little drawings I was doing. I'm showing you how you how you trade speed. And I'm going to show you with this chart alone how you can start timing these trades and see these blow off rallies. What we want to do is we want to look for speed bars. Now this is my nine Simrinko. It's my nine Simrinko. So it's a larger time frame. So what we want to do is we want to look for speed in the market. So let's just go down through here and let's go through the entire trading session. Because if you if you can understand this concept, not only will it benefit you when the algorithm gets programmed, the auto algorithm with this in it, it's going to set you apart and give you the edge over your trading opponents on a daily basis. Because what we want to do is we want to see a, can, a two candle close or less inside of a closed trend box. This is a one candle close. Then what I want to see after the speed comes in on this time frame, I want to see a full retracement down here. So I want to see a full retracement because I want to get into a market that has retraced or snapped back against overall trend it's called retracement trading. So you want to marry these two up. You first want to get speed in the market because that tells you it's going to be like a rubber band effect where it gets stretched and then she just pushes up. So we want to get speed first. Here's a big wide trend box. And I love the speed bars that come out of a wide trend box on the larger time frame. And that's categorized of three candles or more. Wide would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, so on, candles inside of a closed trend box. The major speed trades happen with one or two candles closed inside. Now I don't mean the candles that straddle the outside of the box. I'm talking of a closed trend box. It has to be closed. Once it's closed, I'm looking for this oscillator down here. Oscillators to me are absolutely worthless by nature by themselves. They don't work. They're actually terrible, right? The MAC, MACD, RSI, stochastics, you know, they're just terrible. But they're excellent when you know when to time them. The speed box and the trend box gives us the timing feature on the oscillator where we can use it. So now what we can do is we can cherry pick our trades. Speed comes in. Oscillator gets below 10%. There's our reversal bar. Actually hit the 50-day moving average, and we're moving up. Now, I do have three moving averages on there to help a trend. So these moving averages... Trend is not only with speed, right, with the speed box. So you got A, the speed box, two candles or less. There's three ways I look for trends because I don't want to screw it up. I want to get it right. You get the trend right, you're 50% there. Two candles or less inside of a closed trend box. That tells you there's speed coming in the market. We, we want to trade speed. Second way to establish trend, that's my, that's my most important. The second way to establish trend is the line in the sand, blue line. That acts as natural support on the previous day. 
This is where it's looking for a V bottom. See this right here, this level. You'll see it come down to this level, break, retest this level, and just accelerate right off of it. You'll see thousands of trades like this where you just come down and you just bounce right off the previous support level, which was there. So that's why I marked up a – I said there's two ways we can trade the market this morning. If it sells off from this red point, we trade the V bottom bounce for the hard uptrend retracement. That's where low value area was too on market profile. Or we buy the breakout with no resistance to the upside. So this blue line right here, this blue line, not market profile, it's on the it's on the trend chart. That's our line in the sand. And you're gonna do yourself a big favor of not going against that line in the sand. If if you are above it, be a net buyer. If you're below it, be a net seller. So not only are we above we have green trend boxes. I'm above my line in the sand. Those are the two. It takes me a half a second to realize what trend is in any given market on any given second. Just look at those two indicators and you'll know right away. There's no paralysis by analysis. There's no 30 to 60 minutes trying to figure out what the market's doing. It is what it is. Either we're in an uptrend, right, or downtrend, or we're sideways. So we either go vertical or we go sideways. It's not hard. The market's not hard to understand. We're going vertical or we go sideways. The third, the third would be the moving averages. Now everybody knows I do not like moving averages for support and resistance. Now they will come down to the 50. As you can see here, this was confluence. You see a lot of 50 moving average trades. I do like, and even when I'm doing my stock trades, I do like when I see an explosion in volume, I'll look at the past 50 day volume average. And if you break the 50 day volume average on a stock that I look at and it gets way away from the 50, I'm looking for it to come down and test the 50 to get long. It's a, it's a, it's a hedge fund play. A lot of hedge funds use that technique. It's one of the uh, prop firms use it. They see a 50 day move, a 50 day average volume explosion gets way away from the 50 they'll buy that 50 on the pullback in fact they'll close it below the 50 for two days no more than two days to get a lot of stops out bring it back above and you'll see the stock explode for example plug power well, plug power i bought at 14 and a half it's at 70 dollars within a couple months Did exactly that exploded to 20 came down to the 50 touch right on it they closed below one day, went right back above the next day, 14 and a half to 70 bucks within a couple months. So using the 50 is one way how you can do it. You know, I do like that. That's, that's, that's one way how to do it. But moving averages to me are for trend. Use them for trend direction. So I, there's two ways I like, I like to look at the moving averages. I like to look at them with the angle. I like to look at the angle of the moving averages. There's no secret to moving averages. This is just a simple 50, a 20, and an 8 moving average. If the 8's above the 20 and 20 is above the 50, you're in a hard trend if it's angled up. If these things are sideways and going up and down below each other and going sideways, you do not want to trade retracements. You're going to get your butt kicked. You're, they're, they're going to keep taking your stops. But in trend markets, you can really cherry pick trades. So that's three ways to find trend right there. Speed box to get the market moving. If you're a trader, a day trader, you got to have speed. If you don't have speed, you're going to get nickeled and dimed all day and stopped out over and over. Speed box with, with color of the trend box, the same color. So you had everything going for you because yesterday, the whole trading session, you're green all day, green trend boxes. Let's cherry pick the trades now. Let's look at major op optimal times to get in. There's your speed box. Here's your retracement. There's your speed box, speed box, here is your retracement. Look at these points of entry, really helps you out. Right here, speed box, two candles close or less, two candles close or less, two candles close or less, are you kidding me? Remember I said this is the breakout point right here at 14 and a half to look to go long. We had a 75 point upside in the S&P, which is crazy. You have three back-to-back -back speed bars. There's your full retracement. And look, it caught the bottom. 
You're getting my point here. All right. We come in with speed again. Here's my speed box. Two candles or less. Here's one candle. If you see one candle, if you see one candle, one candle, hello, you're looking at a blow off rally, probably right into the close. One candle close or less. Look for that first retracement, and we should have a major explosion to the upside. Do we have a retracement? There it is. Nailed it. Nailed the low. Right here. Explosion into the close. Look at all these points of reference. So you can go back in your charts. Look at all these points of reference. And they all involve those three characteristics. There's my breakout buy. This is the one I said to look for the buy yesterday. I set you guys up on that one. We talked about it for about 20 minutes. I set you guys up on that little guy right there for the explosion. All right. So that. Another retracement. All right. So trend with speed, speed box, two candles or less, closed trend box. If you get one candle, like down here, one candle started here, one candle started here. Look at the explosions. It just really gets your mind right. Now, if you use the trend boxes on a smaller time frame, what we're going to do with the algo, automated algo, I'm going to let you do, a, I'm going to have a higher time frame filter like this. A nine sim where you can interrupt the three or five sim on a retracement. Meaning what it'll do, it will wait until you get a trend box and a full retracement on the nine sim on this higher time frame down here on the full retracement. And then you can enter on a small time frame for small stops. It's 25, George. 25, and we have 12 on the um, on the five sim. We moved it from 15 to 12. 25 on the trend box, George. Nine Simrenko. That will help set you up. You're welcome. So this will help you set you up. What we need to do. Now, that's speed, right? Now let's go to the next step then. All right? Are we all clear on that? Give me a why if we're all clear on that about trend box, speed box, line in the sand, moving averages. Are we all clear? Uh, the 5 sim was moved down to 12, Steve, from 15. You're welcome, man. So if we know this then, right, if we know that we're looking for we got the trend down, green boxes. We know when to time the trade because of our speed close boxes. We know to look for the full retracement on our oscillator below, and we know the moving averages will help us guide us with trend. How can we time our trades on blow-off rallies? There's only two things you need to do, actually three. One is market profile. This is how you time your trades. Not only on full retracements helps you out, we're going to give you confluence. Supply slash demand lines. This is what separates us from all the chaff out there, all the indicators that are worthless. Those two levels right there, market profile, supply, demand lines, are automatically generated, and they're all based upon order flow. It's not my opinion. It's not your opinion. It's not anybody else's opinion, but order flow. These are totally generated off order flow. Buyers and sellers, automated algorithms coming in and out of the market, they automatically plot these positions. Third one is symmetry dots, which I'll go over in a second. This is more of a this is more of a second tier indicator or third tier indicator symmetry dots. Your first tier indicators are market profile supply demand because you, if you get the trend box right with speed, 
and the full retracement, you put yourself in the best position on a retracement to win. Now what you can do is you can add support and resistance in there to marry it up against support and resistance. So now you got the trend right, you got the speed coming in the market. Well, let's let's see it break retest and trade. It's called an ABC long or ABC short. So what we can do then is we can use market profile and supply demand to let us do that. We'll let it break out, let it retest, and then we enter with market delta. All right, so market profile is one way to do it, supply demand. So yesterday when I set this big move up yesterday, and you guys probably thought I was crazy saying we got a 75-point upside on the S&P today, right? I wasn't too far off, was I? Because what I saw in the market was, it's not my opinion. I don't guess at this stuff. It's not like I'm Nostradamus and knew this thing was going to go up so big yesterday before it even happened. You know, it's because I'm reading the chart. I'm, I'm reading what the market's telling me. It's telling me that I've got no resistance above 14 and a half. None. Zero. None. There's zero resistance on the on on my chart. So that tells me we want to hold runners in this. That's a 14 and a half move up to 60. That's a 45 point move. Almost a 50 point move. Almost a hundred. You know, right? Right there. Just off that. Almost a 200 tick, I'm sorry, move. 200 tick potential play. 200 ticks into the close. So we want to look for break retest off market profile supply demand after you establish trend and speed. Okay? So here's your supply line. A simple trade we look for. You break out the supply by two candle close or more. It's got to be two candles. It's got a closing basis. You look for the retest. There's your red reversal bar. This is a negative market delta. And it went right back to positive market delta, and the market just exploded, just like we planned yesterday. Okay? So we use the trend with the speed boxes, with the blue line of sand to get on the right side of it, and the moving averages. That tells us the trend. We have the speed box, two candle close or less, it tells us when to time the retracement. Then we get the full retracement to time the trade, and then we look for it to break, retest a market profile, supply demand. Now, let's go a step further. When, though, these two are my main cogs to the system, market profile, supply demand, because they're order flow. That's not our opinion. That's exactly what's happening with the market. The great thing about these markets, whether it be a prop firm or a hedge fund or a big bank, you know, Tina says it, it, it best, she said one of our members, you know, they're a big cruise ship and we're a speedboat. And it's exactly how you need to think how the market trades. You, you need to remember that, is that once they go in motion, they, it's hard for them to get in and out of the market because they're big position sizing. We're little speed load boats. We can get inside and outside the market relatively quickly. We're all not doing major contracts in here. I mean, some, some members in here do some major contracts, but on the average, it's not like you're pushing around 100 to 200 tick con I mean, 200, 300 contracts. So that leaves us very nimble. So we can look for market profile supply demands of where they're showing our support and resistance, past support and resistance to play off of. Okay. Now, what happens if you break outside of the supply line or demand line, you have these symmetry dots. Now, the symmetry dots are great when you work outside market profiles. So what you can do is these guys are great when they come in two ticks within symmetry. Now, symmetry dots, what they do is they measure, that's why I call them pretty much the symmetry or the rhythm of the market. And what I want to try to do when I get outside of HB or LVA, I want to come within two ticks and try to buy these lows off blue and uptrends and sell reds and downtrends. So you can see all these came within two ticks. This is a W bottom here, and they all worked out. Why did they all work out? Is it some magical formula that these symmetry dots are? No. Right. What they are is the rhythm of the market on pullbacks. What I found when I developed these, I originally developed these to scale contracts, meaning if I would get in here, 
on a pullback. I would like to scale within symmetry to reduce contracts here on the way up. You know, here, just scale contracts red. If I'm buying blue, I want to scale contracts red. You know, so that's how I originally developed the symmetry routes years and years and years ago. Well, what sort of happened, and I sort of backed my way into this. I didn't even mean for this to happen. I found out it creates major support and resistance when market profile is broken out of. And they are beautiful. If there's one indicator that's a second, third tier indicator that we sell for a lifetime license, and it's just a one-time fee of 300 bucks or 297, whatever Gerald has on there, is that this thing, I get so many compliments on this indicator. And it's because if you know how to trade it the right way, it can really work on your favor. And the right way how to trade this indicator is when you get outside a profile. If you're hard trending, you, you can pretty much tell yourself, and you can ask hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of traders around the world that trade all kinds of markets. You can pretty much tell yourself symmetry is going to call these lows on most of the lows during that breakout session if you break HV and LVA with hard trend. So if your trend box is all green, 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 and I got speed, you're pretty much going to see some symmetry dot trades. In fact, how I'm program programming the automated algorithm for you guys is that I'm having it programmed, once you get outside HV and LVA as a toggle switch, it will start taking symmetry dot trades. And then we talked about that in the conference call. But you can see, after it broke out, one, two, three, four nice trades in a row, and it comes at 1030, four, here's five, five nice trades, there's five back-to-back -back trades at work within two ticks of symmetry. Five for five. Now you can either call that dumb luck, or those of you that know how to trade this the correct way, you know it just works. And we've used this indicator for years and years and years and years, and it's timeless because it's supply and demand. This indicator is timeless just like supply and demand is, just like market profile. So those are the three indicators you just need to use. You just got to know how to trade them. You break outside of HV and LVA, symmetry dots work great. Symmetry dots to me are worthless if you're inside of HV and LVA, they act as natural support and resistance if you want to sell the HVN and buy the LVA and chop. But other than that, it's a second, third tier indicator. Can you use this indicator all by itself? No, because you never know where the breakout is, right? That's why you need market profile. And that's why we have market profile in the room. Once market profile was broken out of yesterday, these symmetry dots were on absolute fire. If you look when market profile broke out, it was the same spot yesterday. Let's see if it moved on me. Yeah, it moved up. But here it is. The control point was uh, where it was at. So here's my breakout, right? I said if we get above, this is where I was talking about it yesterday, right here in the room. I said if we get outside, this, is, this was actually HVA that actually turned into the control point later on in the session. I said if we close a couple candle close, watch this market explode to 14 and a half. There it is. And then from 14 and a half, here's 14 and a half. It got above it, back below it, got above it, and held it on this W bottom. Here's your buy point above the price profile. But you can tell this profile right here, that called the breakout. Right there, it got above HVA, the red. This was the red yesterday. It's above my line of sand right there. So your symmetry dots called this low, called this low, called this low, all the way up. If you look at them, let me put them next, next to the market profile. You start understanding how I like to trade this market. Look at my symmetry dots. It called this low. It called this low. This low. This low. This low. All predicated on breaking outside a market profile. And that's all you got to do. If you want to play this video over and over and over again to get your mind right, that's how you want to attack the market on any given market, any given day, any given week. Now, there is, I'll do the next video I'll do tomorrow, I'll do it in chop. So today, I'm going to label this video at daytradingthefutures.com, how to trade trend with extreme accuracy, right? And then tomorrow, I'll put how to trade chop with extreme accuracy. And those are the only two markets you're going to experience. And I don't care what you trade, no matter what. I am a huge, I've been buying the heck out of electronic vehicle stocks. And I'm up, I had a, the biggest year I've ever had in the market last year. Right, so at first it was the virus stocks I got on, 
made almost triple my money on that. But then the, the EV stocks is where I made a lot, a lot, a lot of money, you know, last year. So why? Because I was using these techniques, the same techniques, right? So, you know, you've got to make sure that you use that type of technique to have to, to look at order flow. It's strictly order flow, right? I mean, we are an educational room. That's what we do. We, we don't tell you when to buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. We're not financial advisors, right? I'm not telling you, you got to buy here exactly at this bar and do this. We give you the tools what to do. That's what we do. We give you the tools, but I teach you how I use these tools. You know, and these tools are very, very effective when you know how to trade them. So today, right, this is not a trading room where we say buy now, sell now, buy now, sell now. A lot of trading rooms are like that. We'll never do that. We're an educational room, period. We give you sophisticated indicators that give you an edge over your trading opponents, period. We will never tell you buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here. You know, that's not what we do. But what I will do, I will teach you market structure. And I'll teach you how to use market profile. I'll teach you how to use market delta. I'll teach you how to use supply demand. I'll teach you how to use symmetry dots, when to use them. Because that will give you an edge over your opponents. And that's what we're here for. That's why we're developing this automated algorithm for you guys to work on to get it where you want to get it. Because if you know how to trade the system manually like this, then you're going to know how to get that automated program where you want to get it. All right? And that's what we want to do. That's what we're trying to do as traders. We're trying to get to that level. Okay?